We all use Li-ion batteries and want to avoid being cheated or having an exploding battery. In this video, we'll explore how to test them, both when they arrive and during usage, using do-it-yourself methods as well as affordable instruments. We'll also dig deeper to understand why these tests matter. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the front row. Here is what we'll cover. Visual inspection. Why the four-wire method is essential. Testing with regular lab instruments. Using specialized instruments for convenience. Capacity testing. Internal resistance testing. Temperature monitoring, overcharge and overdischarge protection testing, overcurrent protection testing, and self discharge testing. Let's start with the basics. Visual inspection. For new batteries, always check size and weight. Lighter or smaller batteries usually have less capacity. Fake batteries are often significantly lighter or smaller than their proper counterparts. A first comparison can be done by dividing the capacity by the weight. Here we have two examples. A 5000 mAh battery weights 76 grams. Its factor is 66. A 3500 mAh battery weights 44 grams, so its factor is 79. Higher factors typically indicate better batteries, but could also signal fakes. If you find a battery with a suspiciously high factor, measure its capacity right after arrival and start a dispute if something is not correct. This battery has a factor of only 33. Very low. But wait, it is 7.4 instead of 3.7 volt. To compare it fairly with 3.7 volt batteries, we must multiply its factor by 2. Alternatively, we can use milliwatt hours instead of milliampere hours for comparisons. I compiled a table with factors based on milliampere hours and milliwatt hours for some batteries in my lab. This one with the extremely high factor is new, so I tested its capacity and only got 2850 instead of 3500 milliampere hours. Even with the actual capacity, its factor is high. So, despite the mislabeled capacity, it still showed decent quality. Just not correctly labeled. Mislabeling is a typical supplier behavior, particularly for batteries. That is why I usually start a dispute to remind suppliers that cheating doesn't pay. Another vital check, particularly for used 18650 cells, is in this area. Because the whole outer part is grounded, on this side the distance between the poles is small and the chance for a short is high. Not so on the opposite side, where everything is grounded. This is why I always suggest inserting and removing these batteries with the ground pole first. It reduces this kind of damage. Pouch batteries are another concern. They can expand over time. While the exact risks aren't clear to me, I encourage you to comment about your experience or scientific studies you know. Personally, I avoid using them indoors or unsupervised. Another problem is that they no longer fit in their place and therefore can be damaged by the housing. This is when it gets really dangerous. So far we compared rated milliampere hours or milliwatt hours. But how do we measure the real thing? Measuring milliampere hours is straightforward. You connect a resistor between the poles and an ampere meter with a milliampere hours display in series. Because the current is the same everywhere, wire losses do not affect the measurement. This is different from measuring milliwatt hours. The ampere meter can stay where it is, but if the voltmeter is here, the loss of these wires reduces the accuracy of your measurement because they behave like small resistors that create a voltage drop. Correct would be to measure the voltage right at the battery. Placing the meters right at the battery poles is often impractical. What to do? A simple trick is to add two parallel wires for voltage measurement. But why should this make a difference? 
because voltmeters have a high input resistance, these wires carry almost no current and their voltage drop is neglectable, which leads to accurate readings. Simple. This is why more advanced electronic loads include additional sensing wires. When is measuring milliampere hour sufficient and when is milliwatt hour needed? For designs with linear voltage regulators, milliampere hours is sufficient to estimate the lifetime of a battery because the current remains the same at your controller. For devices like bicycle batteries, milliwatt hours or watt hours is more appropriate. Motors, for instance, consume less current for the same power when the battery is fully charged. What are typical instruments for these tests? Standard multimeters or such a do-it-yourself combined volt ampere meter as we built in video number 197 work well for small batteries. Just add a high power resistor to dissipate energy, but be careful, they can get very hot. Also ensure your battery has low voltage protection, as discharging to zero volt can permanently damage Li-ion batteries. My favorite tester for 3.7 volt batteries is this $15 unit for 4 cells or $6 for 2. It is perfect for 18650 batteries and supports other formats with its flexible terminals. Best of all, it automatically charges and discharges all 4 batteries independently. This tester isn't highly accurate, but it is good enough for the girls I go out with. It stops charging and discharging at specific voltages, making it suitable even for non-protected cells, but not for LiFePO4 batteries. For higher voltages or power, the DL24 variants are a great option with ratings up to 600 Watt and built-in 4-wire measurement. At the high end, there are semi-professional electronic loads. These are versatile but expensive and not necessary for basic battery testing. In addition, they require manual charging of the batteries with a bench power supply. I'll include links to a few other options in the video description because prices are low during Black Friday season. Now let's discuss internal resistance. Batteries can be modeled as an ideal voltage source with a small resistor in series. This resistor, inherent to the battery's construction, has two drawbacks. First, the voltage loss reduces usable energy. And second, heat dissipation is bad for batteries. For example, a Raspberry Pi may crash under high load if your power supply's internal resistance is too high. Because this internal resistor has no legs, it is hard to measure. And we have to use a trick. First, measure the voltage without current. Then, apply a load to draw current and measure the voltage drop. Use Ohm's law to calculate resistance. The internal resistance varies with the battery's state of charge, discharging current and temperature. Since these resistances are small, the 4-wire method is necessary for accuracy. While the approach with a resistor and meters works, it is cumbersome for a quick test. In addition, to test large batteries, a high current with its associated heat dissipation is needed to get good results. A simpler method uses a specialized instrument. If we look at its cables, it is evident that these instruments use the four-wire technique. But they do not get hot during the test. How do they work? These devices apply a 1 kHz 1 volt square wave and measure millivolts accurately. These probes are perfect for batteries with poles because we can press all four wires against them. Here are some examples. Li-ion batteries typically have resistances in the milliohm range. A 9 volt block battery, by contrast, has a resistance of 1.5 ohms, unsuitable for high current applications due to excessive voltage drop. But is this measurement dependable? To validate accuracy, we can measure known resistors. For instance, this instrument gives readings consistent with my multimeter for 1 ohm and 8 ohm resistors. It works up to 44 volts, by the way. However, for more potent 12 volt car batteries, you get different instruments that use a higher current. 
Here the 4-wire method is even more important. But they only have two clamps. Fake? Fortunately not. Looking closely, we see that two wires are placed inside each clamp. One is connected to this and the second is connected to the other side. A simple and cheap 4-wire technique. A quick way to assess battery health is to check the internal resistance of fully charged batteries. Higher than expected resistance often indicates reduced capacity. Such batteries also tend to heat up during charging or discharging. So monitoring temperature under load is another helpful diagnostic. Internal resistance is also crucial for capacitors, where it's called equivalent series resistance. It's measured using similar instruments and 4-wire technology, but the measurement frequencies are higher. Let's move on to over and under voltage protection. Most 18650 batteries lack built-in protection. Preventing over voltage is straightforward with a dedicated charger or setting your lap power supply to the maximum charging voltage of 4.2 volts. However, under voltage protection is trickier. Many devices don't offer it. For example, my torch. I forgot to switch it off a few times, resulting in a completely flat light-ion battery. After one of them caught fire during recharging, I started using only protected cells for these situations. Because these are standard cells with an added protection layer, they are longer and do not fit such holders. Watch video number 160 if you want to add protection to your unprotected cells. These flat batteries usually come with a protection board included. Unfortunately, you must test them manually. Try to charge them above the maximum voltage or discharge them below the minimum. To save time, I charge or discharge them fully with an automated tool. Then I continue charging or discharging manually and check if the protection board kicks in. If so, I can use it in unprotected applications. A particularly risky scenario arises when charging LiFePo 4 batteries with a standard Li-Ion charger. Since their maximum voltage is 3.6 volt, overcharging can render them useless. The under voltage protection for LiFePo 4 batteries should work for both chemistries at similar levels. Next is overcurrent protection. Due to their low internal resistance, Li-Ion batteries can deliver dangerously high currents if unprotected. Some protection boards of these flat batteries include overcurrent safeguards. To test this, use a 1 ohm resistor or lower and a multimeter. Check if the voltage drops to zero at high current levels, an indicator that the overcurrent protection stopped the flow. A few amperes should be safe for most batteries. If you are adventurous, you can briefly short the battery using a multimeter in the 10 ampere range but only if you have a replacement fuse handy and know how to replace it. If the fuse blows, the battery most likely lacks overcurrent protection. Self-discharge is another concern. All batteries lose charge over time, even when not in use. Testing for this, often done at elevated temperatures, is mostly reserved for professionals. Makers rarely bother. We typically just recharge our batteries periodically. Here's what to remember. Visual inspection, especially checking the weight of a new cell, can reveal clues about its capacity. Used 18650 cells should be checked around the positive pole, as mechanical damage in this area can be dangerous. The 4-wire method is crucial for accurate measurements, and we now understand why and how to use it. Simple lab instruments can be used for testing, while specialized tools add automatic charging and discharging for convenience. The two key tests are capacity and internal resistance. Monitoring temperature can help identifying a failing battery early. This method is often used in battery packs. Overcharge and overdischarge protection are essential for Li-Ion batteries. Always confirm whether the battery or the device includes it. Otherwise, add it at a convenient place. If overcurrent protection is built in, can be tested. However, anyway, avoid shorting battery poles if possible. 
While self-discharge occurs naturally, makers rarely test for it. We simply recharge batteries as needed. That was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.